permanent line cell. What does that mean? They propose to build a concrete coffin to put the most highly toxic lead, arsenic, and other contaminants into the coffin. Remember our last hearing here when we talked about that? So they're putting aside in the budget $6 million for this coffin to put the stuff inside. The long-term monitoring and engineering control and fencing for $3 million, other expenses for $2 million. Why did we put this up? This is Mr. Puga's bottom line. This is where the $52 million goes. So if we want to do more than scrape, fence, and pump, this community, this region, our vision has to start here. Next slide. This is the uh, contact information for Mr. Puga, and he'll be here to introduce himself. You can get in touch with him right there to send him your ideas. Uh, we have asked the media to put this up so folks can send stuff straight to him and his website so that what this community wants and what this vision might look like can come uh, straight from you. The city will be involved in a more formal process that will meet legal notice requirements, as will Mr. Puga, but that is his contact information. The trust agreement is online. You can go read it if you want, but this is the language that creates the fiduciary relationship. He's now in charge of making things happen over on the Osarco site. Next slide. So why are we here tonight? What are we really doing here? In my view, we have a call to action for an historic opportunity. And to me, at least, and to our office, it is the highest and best use of this pass to the north side. It is unique in our history, our culture, and our strategies. And the second is to make sure that site is clean. That we never ever have to worry about our water and soil on site or off site again in this region. So we've defined in our office these as the go forward goals. And we're hopeful that the Student Government Association of UTEP and all of us put our energies, our vision, and our hopes into the first goal. Because it's not Mr. Puga's responsibility to develop and see the vision of the future. It is ours, and especially those elected officials that we've put into the sacred trust of public office to make it happen. Last slide. I'm going to just touch on this briefly. That's what he's got to clean up. The second number is what the EPA told me in 2001 it would cost to do on-site cleanup and remediation. And the last number is the number that Ted Houghton, the tax study commissioner, told him that the TCEQ said it would cost to clean up that site. And so the numbers for the cleanup have been fairly heavily debated. Uh, the 52 million basically scrapes, pumps, and fences. Next slide. Here's something that we put when we asked you to join us tonight. For centuries, the past of the North has defined us Right there where Three State Meet is a unique site. The Rio Grande offers rare, useful riverfront property, and if you, it's practically the only place where we can do something like Austin's done, for example. UTEP and the Sumo are next door. Peace Park, where Madero launched Mexico's futures across the river. Downtown is within a mile. Sunday Casino is just around the bend. Rail, energy, broadband, and travelers have passed through this site. Now it's up to us to define what we're going to do. I appreciate so much you coming tonight, and I look forward to any questions you may have. I'd like to introduce Roberto Puga, the custodial trustee of the Sarko site.
implement the vision for the remedy as uh, put forward by GCTQ uh, with the money that was made available, and to work together with the community to find the a, a, a best use, a viable use for the property. And I agree wholeheartedly with the senator when he said that that is a community trust. I'm going to be taking input from the community about what is the best use of this property. And within the limits of my fiduciary duty, you know, I, am, I, I am expected to recoup some of the remediation money by the sale of this property. But I have latitude uh, to give the community input. And I want to work with the city and the people of El Paso to, to end up with the development here that is worthy of the city and can be endorsed by them. Now to get there, um, we have a challenge. It's, it's, uh, it's a big site. Uh, the cross section that Senator Shapley put up you know, indicates the type of, of environmental impacts that are there. Um, there is an outline for how those environmental impacts should be tackled, and I will be looking uh, to maximize the dollars that we did to make sure that they are sufficient, and I will be augmenting that million dollar pot of money uh, by going to sale of some of the assets that the Russell Corporation left behind. You know, some of the equipment on the site has value and we'll be selling it to uh, interested parties uh, to raise more funds. And um, and all of that will be posted on our website. Uh, I do want to point out that we are uh, launching a website next week. It's called www recastingasarco.com and the website is divided into three portals. The first one is information, uh, information background on the site, information about what's there now, pictures and videos about the structures that are there now. Uh, it will be a repository of uh, past and present environmental uh, uh, studies. So we'll be posting uh, information that has been collected by EPA posting the information we collect, we'll be posting our plans moving forward. Uh, so all of that will be available to the public on the website. Uh, the second portal is for interested contractors, you know, folks that want to work on the site to help the remediation. We'll be putting up a registry for those interested contractors. And then we'll be running all of our procurement, that's you know, our call for statements of qualification and request proposals to that website so they can be open to any qualified firm uh, that wants to uh, that wants to try out and, and help us. And lastly, the third portal is a blog uh, where people in the community can, can put their opinions, their questions, their observations, their ideas for the future of the site. And we'll be looking at that very carefully. We'll post everything. Uh, the only caveat is we won't post anything that's vulgar. Uh, but anything else, we'll put it up there uh, for everyone to see. In addition, um, the student body here uh, went through a, a four-question uh, uh, survey, uh, and I've been giving the results of that, and I will be posting the results of that survey up on, on our website, and in addition to the slides that Senator Schaap has just went. Um, the things that we are working on very hard right now are to stabilize the site. Uh, when Asarco left it, you know, they had been uh, running the site, you know, expecting perhaps to overcome optimistically that they could eventually reopen it. Um, so we need to ratchet down uh, the electricity use at the site. Uh, we gotta make sure that everything we're doing there is right size so that we're not spending too much money just maintaining the site. Uh, and also, we'll be looking for an environmental uh, engineering consultant to come in and help with us. To help us, we'll be putting out uh, a request for statements of qualifications from interested firms next week and we're hoping to have that firm on board in the next couple of months. Um, and then lastly, through our website, we'll be announcing uh, public meetings that will be uh, put together. And then we're looking into the possibility, and at this point it's just a possibility, of uh, perhaps having uh, an open house at the site. Uh, if we think we can do it safely and answer people's concerns about the site, uh, that's something that we would like to do. And just give folks who have been looking at the site uh, with um, apprehension for so long. Uh, to open the doors open, let the people come in, take a look, to see what's really there, satisfy the curiosity, uh, and get some measure of what was there before uh, we begin the work of mediation. In 
so far as remediation, uh, we're going to be going forward in, in three, phase, three main phases. Uh, one is demolition. We're going to be knocking everything down. Uh, there is some question about the 800 foot tall smoke stack. I've received a lot of input. Uh, most of it fairly positive to leave it up, or at least you know, giving us the option to leave it up in the future and, and seeing if it can work around the future of the redevelopment of the site. Uh, so at this point, we have no concrete plans to knock uh, the 800 foot tall smoke stack, and we'll get more input uh, as we go along. Uh, and then there's the soils remedy. Uh, the center touched on that, the, putting the worst elements uh, in, in, a, in a cell. Other elements behind uh, or beneath asphalt paving, and then there's already three other cells that have already been constructed by Sergeant on the property, and we'll have to make sure that they are all uh, located correctly on the site and they maximize the use of the property going forward. And then, uh, lastly, but most importantly, is the groundwater remedy, uh, making sure that we uh, take care of that correctly and in a sustainable and green manner. Uh, I'm humbled and privileged to be given this card. I fully understand how important it is to the community. Uh, I pledge to you to be open to what I do, to take your input, uh, to meet with you, to talk with you, uh, and to be physically responsible with the money that's made available. And uh, at any time, please send me an email, post a blog on our website, give me a call. It might take me a few hours, maybe a day to get back to you, but I will get back to you forward uh, to working on this with you and, and God willing in a few years we'll, be, we'll get a point where we can move to the next step here and, and, and really finalize and finally use the final use of this property. So.
grassy area and parks, a labor memorial, and the university amphitheater. So um, this picture right here is what it used to look like. And right here is the community map vision. And this is what it currently looks like right there. So the website is right here. And uh, hopefully, you know, El Paso would have something somewhere. So this website <coughs> allows the community to put in their input on the different developing areas. And then we can see each area. And, um, the specifics and of what the community wanted to lay out there. So as you can see, it became an area of public space that the whole community was able to benefit from. Okay. Um, so the next community is to come in Washington. To come in Washington is just one of us. Um, on the banks of the commencement bay was a copper smelter that began operating in 1890 around when arse opened in the 1900s. The Tacoma smelter used ore with high arsenic content, resulting in high levels of arsenic pollution. When the federal government began efforts to regulate arsenic in the workplace and environment, the Tacoma smelter became a center of attention. Why? Because in 1984, ASARCO announced that it would be closing its smelter because there was a large amount of emissions that was causing cancer in the area. So at the time, an Asarco vice president claimed that the smelter was closing due 